Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students, today we discuss the important topic of company law, kinds of companies. The learning outcome of this discussion gain comprehensive knowledge of the classification of companies as defined in Companies Act 2013 including private companies, public company, one person company and more and learn the distinct ownership structure and characteristics of various types of companies. Understand the specific regulatory and compliance requirements applicable to each type of company. Learn the step-by-step -step process of forming and registering different types of companies including the documentation required and the role of the registrar of companies regarding issue the certificate of incorporation. We acquainted here with the legal framework governing companies and its evolution under the Companies Act 2013. We well acquainted with these objectives which settle by in the form of learning outcome. Here various types of companies define here on the basis of ownership, on the basis of registration, on the basis of membership, on the basis of structural basis, on the basis of issue, the certificate of incorporation or different segments on which basis we differentiate between the company. Basically two type of companies we consider here for the ordinary citizens or the layman point of view. One is private company, another is public company. Rest of the types we discuss in detail later on. First public company that is defined in section 271. In this definition public company means a company which is not a private company. This definition a statutory definition defined by Companies Act 2013. If a company is a private company, no doubt that is not treated as a public company, has a minimum paid up share capital as prescribed. Minimum paid up share capital rules applicable before 2015 and prior to 2015, the minimum capital required for registration as a public limited company 5 lakh rupees. But after the amendment introduced in the year of 2015, this limit obsolete and no any such limit nowadays applicable on the companies. Any paid up capital is a sufficient paid up capital for obtain the certificate of incorporation being a public limited company. And a subsidiary company even if it maintains private company status in its article is considered a public company under this act. When it is a subsidiary of public company, the automatically status of the company considered from the status of holding company. Section 3.1 states that a public company may be formed for any lawful purpose. Purpose basically define which type of companies you incorporate or the association resulted in which form. Lawful purpose are the basic condition to settle any association or law only protect those activities of the association which are lawful and any unlawful activity attract the legal provisions and the punishments are also applicable if any activity is categorized as unlawful activity. Here seven or more persons required to incorporate a company as a public limited company and 
to constitute a board of directors in a public limited company minimum 3 directors required as per section 149 of the companies act and there is no restriction on the maximum number of directors limit of maximum numbers no doubt applicable that's 15 but this limit may be increase with the permission of central government as and when required on the requisition of the company central government may grant permission to increase the limit of maximum in a company of the for the directors liability of each shareholder is limited again i emphasize on this point limited word indicates that you are only liable up to your investment part if you are ready to buy 1000 share of any company and the value nominal value of each share is 10000 rupees it means you need to be pay here 10,000 rupees. If you pay the entire amount of this 10,000 rupees in one instance, then liability comes to be an end. Liability only up to your unpaid share part. It means you pay the 10 rupees as a whole, there is no liability. If you pay partial, partial amount, so you will be liable for the remaining amount. And the paid amount if you pay entire amount there is no any liability so investment decide how much share you decide to buy how much shares you agree to subscribe so limited liability means your investment part no restriction on the maximum number of members that can be allowed in a public company up to unlimited extent the condition only applicable on minimum minimum seven persons required and there is no limit on maximum number of persons share may be listed on stock exchange that is not an essential condition if you require to be registered you register the stock exchange if you decide not to be registered in the stock exchange that's your own sweet will and but if you registered in stock exchange that stock exchange rules and regulations are applicable on the listed securities and guidelines of SEBI also applicable on such companies which apply for listing of their securities in the stock exchange. And you are here supposed to be mentioned name. In the name clearly indicate that the company members liability is limited. Along with your name you clearly mention that liability of member is limited. If you only use word limited, that's supposed to be a public limited. If the company is incorporated as a private limited, you need to be there clearly mentioned the company is private limited. So if you not mention private limited, we presume the company is a limited company, public limited company. Section 268, the definition define of private company it means any company which restrict to transfer its shares. There is a restriction on transfer of its share. Restriction relates to ownership. Ownership if restricted, that's decided by company, either they allow to transfer the ownership or not. So generally in private limited companies, ownership transfer strictly restrict uh, strictly not allowed limit the number of members to maximum of 200 minimum two members required to establish a company as a private limited company and the maximum limit also fix here 200 members but prior to this act when the matters deals by companies act 1956 the limit was 50 members but in 2013 act this maximum number limit in case of private limited company that extend to 200 prohibits to invite public for investment this company not allowed to issue the prospectus prospectus not issued by this company public company issue the prospectus through prospectus you invite the investors to invest your hard savings in companies but private limited companies are restricted not allowed to issue the prospectus and condition of minimum share capital of 1 lakh rupees this applicable before 2015 but after two, 2015 amendments 
this condition is no more survive and obsolete. Company may issue debenture to any number of persons, limit only applicable for the purpose of investment, for the purpose of invest members. But there is no any limit on private company regarding issue, how much debentures or any number of persons may issue the debentures. Condition is only invitation to the public to subscribe for shares cannot be made. Directors may in their absolute discretion and without assigning any reason therefore decline the register a transfer of any share whether fully paid up or partly paid up. So this particular condition of restriction is clearly here prohibit for transfer of name in this restriction. So that is the total discretion of the directors. Private company can only collect its capital through private approach means giving opportunity of investment to the persons who are near and dear and not allowed to issue the prospectus. The clear cut direction to the private company they not issue the prospectus if they want to arrange the money they arrange from their own sources and you are not supposed to be invite the public in any form for investment. Special features of private company, most of the provisions of companies act are not applicable on the private company. Majority of the provisions only applicable on the public limited companies. Section 3 very clearly define that minimum and maximum number of members in a private limited company. Minimum 2, maximum 200. That is clearly defined in section 3 of the Companies Act 2013. And 103 that relates to quorum of 2 person unless article of association provide more. Quorum basically relates to how much minimum number of persons required to declare any meeting as a valid meeting. In case of companies, we not act even a single action. We not take even a single step without the meetings. Meetings are essential part in case of companies, either the meeting of board of directors, either the meeting of members. So in case of meeting of members, how much minimum number we required? to declare any meeting as a valid meeting that is known as quorum and quorum here define minimum 2 and if article of association in the favor of more than 2 then this condition laid down by article of association is applicable. Then this condition of 2 is avoid or you ignore this condition of 2 and simple logic behind the same when we constitute a meeting we require minimum two persons one person never constitute a meeting with himself or herself for create a meeting we require minimum two section 149 to declare any association as a board of director or to constitute a board of director we required minimum two directors in case of private limited company to constitute a board of directors, minimum persons as per section 149, minimum 2. Limit on maximum managerial remuneration of 11 percent not applicable on private limited company. Generally section 197, section 197 of the Companies Act 2013 define 5 to 11 percent limit on managerial remuneration, but this limit is applicable on public limited company. But this limit is not applicable on private limited company and 5 to 11 percent here of a net profit, not a gross profit. So in the chapter of in the discussion of directors we discuss in detail how much remuneration required on the part of private and public section 153 rotational retirement condition not applicable on the directors of 
प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी इन केस ऑफ पब्लिक लिमिटेड कंपनी वन थर्ड डायरेक्टर रिटायर्ड आफ्टर एवरी ईयर दैट्स द रिक्वायरमेंट एंड रोटेशनल रिटायरमेंट सिस्टम इज एप्लीकेबल ऑन पब्लिक लिमिटेड कंपनी एंड एज पर सेक्शन 153 प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनीज आर एग्जेप्ट फ्रॉम दिस प्रोविजन ऑफ रोटेशनल रिटायरमेंट provision relating to manner of filing of casual vacancy not applicable it means total discretion of the private limited company how they fill up the vacancy there is no any rule applicable on the same section 161 applicable on public limited company section 164 deals with the disqualification of directors Section 164 deals with the public limited company, but a additional disqualification may be imposed through article of association on private limited company. That's the total discretion on the part of private limited company. They may impose any additional disqualification for their own directors, but. in case of public limited company we are bound to follow the rules and regulation as laid down in the companies act 2013 section 165 that's fix the limit of maximum number of directors uh, simultaneously at the same time you act as a director in how many companies that's defined by section 165 no person can be act as a director in 20 more than 20 companies same time out of these 20 companies a person cannot be director in 10 public limited companies it means two type of restriction here one you are not act as a director more than 20 companies but out of these 20 only 10 allowed to be a public limited company section 149 again private company exempted from requirement of independent director in board of directors this is the concept of good governance here every company is bound to appoint some number of independent director in their board of director but this condition is applicable on public limited companies being a logic here in case of public limited companies money involves to the public public money involved and central government is the guardian of public money so this provision of independent director inserted in statute statute books due to protect the public money due to vigilant remain vigilant or being be vigilant to protect the public money so central government through this act through good governance rules inserted this clause every public company is bound to appoint some directors from the group of independent director and they are supposed to be give impartial advice as and when company required or on regular basis when board of directors meeting call they gave their impartial advice section 177 private company is not required to constitute audit committee but in case of public limited company this is an essential requirement every public limited company must constitute a audit committee and this is a important committee some committees are very very important one is csr committee another is crr committee another is audit committee so audit committee play very important role in the functioning of a company so these all committees we constitute as per the requirement of law and section 177 <laughs> exempt the private company from the requirement of audit committee private company may issue shares other than equity or preferential shares if memorandum of association or article of association in the favor of 
this one that's totally depend on these documents if these documents in the favor of that this company issue which type of shares then there is no need to be take permission from any agency they issue being a private company section 62 no need to keep its right issue open for minimum 15 days otherwise in case of public limited companies this issue must be remain open for 15 days so many issues here but i highlight here one concept of right issue here in case of right issue we offer the shares to existing members their right become first and generally this right is known as preemptive right preemptive right and this right goes to first those who are already members in a company so in case of right issue you no need to be remain open this issue up to 15 days otherwise this is the condition in public limited company section 141 define a person shall be eligible for appointment as an auditor of a company only of he is a chartered accountant firm of chartered accountant or llp not allowed who is a chartered accountant that's always a independent person this particular section 141 clearly define that audit should be made by independent auditor and chartered accountants are considered as independent auditors section 184 interested director this word may be create doubt in the minds of students who is an interested director interested director basically means who have their interest in the company either pecuniary interest or managerial interest or administrative interest if any type of interest of a director involved in the company transaction we presume that there is no any impartial advice given by this director the actions of directors are manipulated actions so interested director can participate in the board meeting after disclose his interest particularly in case of public limited company interested directors not participate in the functioning of company but that's allowed in case of private limited company after disclose his personal interest that's clearly refer in section 184 esop this is a new concept here employee stock option scheme may given by ordinary regulation in case of private limited company and through this scheme loan for purchase of its own shares allowed generally a company not grant the loan to their members or the directors for purchase their own shares but this condition relax in case of private limited company exemption from filing board resolution to registrar of companies that's also here exempted loan to directors subject to certain conditions it means loan also granted by private limited company to their directors generally this is not allowed in case of public limited company and what type of powers exercised by directors provision of section 160 162 180 relating to appointment power restrictions are not applicable on private companies all restrictions are applicable on public limited company before start this discussion i already explained before you majority of the provisions of companies act not applicable on private limited company being a reason reason is here the money of the public not involved in private companies private companies arrange the money from their own sources and public money apply in case of public limited companies journal body meeting section related to section 101 to 107 and 109 are not applicable on private company again 
it means these provisions only designed for the functioning of public limited company and another controversial issues here either a company accept the deposit from public or not deposit from public basically deals by section 73 deposit from members private company allowed to accept deposit from its members as per section 73 how much the limit is here up to 100% of its paid up capital and free reserve free reserve and paid up capital subject to information to roc in prescribed manner free reserve basically assets of the company and capital is also up to some extent that's the asset of the company but particularly this asset is available for doing the business not for any reserve purpose free reserves we create from the profit of the company in any financial year if company earn the profit and after distribute the profit among the members in the form of dividend if any money remain that should be transfer in the free reserve account and this free reserve account may be used for in specific reasons or for specific purposes the so signing of annual return in case of startup company annual return signed by directors are accepted otherwise this return signed by company secretary if company have a company secretary then that officer sign on this return otherwise in small companies or startup companies the sign may be accepted by directors board meeting basically indicate that startup private company may hold only one meeting of the board in each half of the calendar year gap between two meeting is not less than 90 days this particular provision only in the favor of startup companies interested director shall be counted towards the quorum for a board meeting either meeting relates to member either meeting relates to board of directors we required quorum in each and every meeting and how much quorum required here that's depend on article of association and if article of association in favor of more persons then that is treated as quorum otherwise generally minimum 2 person treated as quorum in case of private limited company so this person interested direct is also counted towards quorum that's clearly defined in case of private limited company and another form of company is very famous nowadays that is one person company and we are familiar after introducing this company at 2013 basically this company introduced in the statute book on the recommendation of j j irani committee section 262 define one person company as one person company means a company which has only one person as a member one person start the company one person is director in the company and one person company enjoy all the benefits of private limited company being a statutory provision provided for the same in the statute book section 31 c provide for information how to form this one person company a company that may be formed for any lawful purpose by one person that is to be say a private company so one person company is always a private company and purpose law never protect unlawful things and again and again in the every discussion we highlight this thing law only protect the lawful rights lawful protection given to the affected party if act is unlawful that's not protected in any way so formation of one person company on the recommendation of j j irani committee this man lead the committee and they recommend 
to introduce in statute book one person company concept only one shareholder create the corporate entity status of corporate body given to this company and person is only one legal and financial liabilities limited and how much limited up to unpaid share part if the share part is fully paid then there is no liability liability only up to unpaid share part company b formed for any lawful purpose by one person purpose should be lawful either ye yeah, this is a one person company or private company or public company any type of company only lawful per create for lawful purpose a one person company may be registered as limited by share or limited by guarantee that's e material either that's limited by share or limited by guarantee but main thing is here a one person company is always a private limited company memorandum of association of one person company memorandum must include they use word must include the name of another person with their prior written consent so two things here highlight here one is must must means mandatory memorandum of association of one person company must indicate the name of one another person with their prior written consent in prescribed form who act in absence of sole owner or who is responsible about the company in absence or in capacity or in case of death of sole owner of this one person company the other person mentioned in memorandum of association the name of this person and original subscriber or in case of death of original subscriber or in capacity the contract to whom you contract this person whose name given in this memorandum of association government or regulators or any person contact with this person so this another person may withdraw his consent in such manner as may be prescribed so being a student of law being a academician being a professional you remember one thing once you convey your consent you are allowed to be withdraw any time your consent consent is my sole proprietorship my sole decision my consent is not consent forever my consent is consent for day to day basis so if i gave a consent i may withdraw my consent any time so whose name reflected in memorandum of association of a one person company this person may withdraw his or her consent but one restriction is here one rider is here you apply in prescribed manner which manner provided by act member of one person company may at any time change the name of such person so that's the both liberty liberty at the both heads one at the end of sole owner of the one person company second at the end of whose name reflected in memorandum of association both are allowed to change the name one is withdraw their consent second is change the name of this one person who act in absence or in capacity or in case of death so duty of this sole member of one person company to intimate the company regarding change in nominee if this nominee change any time your duty you intimate to roc within stipulated period the company further shall intimate the registrar regarding such change in name of nominee one intimate to roc another intimate to company and this is an essential requirement if any change you inform to the roc as well as company so what exemptions are available to one person company that's a, a huge list are here section 240 
deals with no need to prepare a cash flow statement one person company exempt from the same section 92 if company secretary not available annual return signed by director that is sufficient roc or any other agency who required this return they accept this return even place before this one before this authority in the with the sign of director if there is no any company secretary there provision related to agm eogm would not apply in opc section 100 to 111 these section basically relates to meeting meeting of members one is annual journal meeting another is extraordinary journal meeting these sections are not applicable on opc one reason behind this one one logic behind this entire doctrine why not these sections are applicable logic is here person is one how he conduct the meeting to so meeting provisions are generally exempt one person not conduct the meeting Con- how he or she conduct the meeting with whom section 134 financial statement one director sign is sufficient in audited financial statement section 137 financial statement file within 180 days in other case 30 days from the closure of financial year required section 173 no need to hold one meeting of board of directors in every 6 months so this condition also relax in the case of one person company so majority of the provisions are not applicable on private limited company and out of these provisions again majority of the provisions exempted from the opc so some another important points related to one person companies here highlighted this one person should be a natural born person no any artificial person allowed and that should be a indian resident citizen indian citizen and resident in india shall be to incorporate opc and indian citizen means who stays minimum 182 days in immediately preceding one calendar year natural person not act as promoter or nominee in more than one opc one opc one nominee the same person not act as a nominee in another one person company same time minor not allowed to be start a opc because consent of minor is no consent in the eyes of law opc not allowed conversion in nbfc or section 8 company eight companies non banking financial companies or section 8 companies opc never allowed to be converted in the same if opc paid up capital increase 50 lakh rupees or turnover increase 2 crore rupees this opc lost their status not remain as opc within 6 months you need to be convert either in public limited company or private limited company so you only enjoy the exemptions or benefits of opc if you are within limit limit of 50 lakh rupees as a capital and 2 crore rupees as a turnover in first 24 months voluntarily not convert in any other type of company if tribunal or court pass the order that's a different situation but voluntarily in first 2 years opc not allowed to be convert in another type of company section 4 Four six B. Prescribe lesser penalty in case of non-compliance, which shall not be more than one half of the penalty specified in such provision, subject to maximum of two lakh rupees in case of company 
and 1 lakh rupees in case of officer. If this OPC commit a default, the lesser penalty is applicable as per the section 446B and this is the another benefit to the OPC regarding this penalty also. And section 285 of the Companies Act 2013 deals with the small company. Small company means a company other than a public company whose paid up share capital not more than 10 crore rupees. If the paid up capital exceed 10 crore rupees, it means that is not a small company. Turnover, there are the two conditions applicable on company, one relates to capital or another relates to turnover. If turnover not exceed 100 crore rupees, then this company is known as small company. Small company not includes a holding company, subsidiary company, non-profit make company or if any company registered under section 8, that is not treated as small company. Corporations governed by specific act or special acts. Generally, if we use word corporation, corporation or statutory company, both are same. They are the two names of such companies and the example of this one, ONGC, your BPCL your DTC, Delhi Transport Corporation, Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, these are the corporation. Corporation and statutory companies generally same and corporation means which introduce or establish by some act, either the central government act, either the state government act. So, if any company established by some special act that is known as corporation. OPC and small company cannot form for non-economic purpose. They are only designed for some economic purpose. Annual return shall be signed by company secretary and by director in case no company secretary is appointed. At least one meeting of the board of director is to be conducted in each, each half of the calendar year and the gap between the two meeting is not less than 90 days. The special conditions are applicable on small companies. Section 446B also applicable on the small company in case of non-compliance lesser penalty is applicable and what penalties here we already discussed in the earlier case relates to lesser penalty. Uh, now we are coming on this part difference between private and public limited company. So a layman basically consider two type of companies but being a student of law, being a academician, being a professional, we know it is very well there are lot of types of company. And basic idea is here how we differentiate between private and public limited company on the basis of members minimum 2 members maximum 200 in case of private limited company. In case of public limited company the minimum 7 and maximum no limit. Second restriction on transfer of ownership that is applicable in case of private limited company, but no any such restriction applicable in case of public limited company. You may be transfer any number of time the ownership, you may be buy 100 times in a day the shares of any company you may be sold any number of time. So there is no any restriction, not allowed to issue the prospectus, private company not allowed to issue the prospectus public limited company allowed to issue the prospectus. The major difference is here and to constitute a board of directors in case of private limited company we required minimum 2 and here to constitute a board of directors as per section 149 minimum 3 directors required and 
these directors which working in the private limited company not retire by rotation as requirement in public limited company as per section 152 retirement by rotation and about the quorum quorum minimum two persons who present that's treated as quorum in case of private limited company unless and until article of association suggests more numbers in the favor of more numbers but the rules of quorum are differently applicable in case of public limited company the limit is here 5 25 and 30 so if members less than 1000 then 5 members and if members more than 1000 but less than 5 5000 the different number required as a quorum if member exceed 5000 different members required to create a quorum of a public limited company uh, managerial remuneration no limit fix as per section 197 in case of private limited company but the limit is here applicable of 11 percent of net profit not accept deposit from public section 197 free to accept deposit from public as per section 76 so these are the few provisions highlight here regarding differentiation between public limited company and private limited company conversion of companies that's defined in section 14 a company may be convert in another form of company with special regulation if article of association have the power to convert or through conversion you may be change the documents also a private company into a public and public to private the conversion need to be fulfill the requirement as per their conversion need conversion of private into public company the different rules are applicable if you wants to convert from public to private different rules are applicable so with the permission of roc you convert your company from public to private and private to public and new certificate of corporation new certificate issued by roc of incorporation so ram purushottam mittal versus hillcrest reality syndicate brothers 2009 case which decided by supreme court this is a leading case on this point in this case held that where final decision taken by special resolution regarding conversion prescribed form had been filed with along with special resolution held that status of company treated as public company even if necessary alteration not had been made in the record of registrar of companies it means when you file your documents to the appropriate authority we presume that you fulfill the entire requirement even the certificate not issued by the roc or the necessary alteration not made by roc in their record the entire thing governed by intention so in this case supreme court held that once you submit the document your intention reflected with this document and you are intended to convert your company from one form to another form and in such cases that's only a formality to register your documents by roc so conversion of public into private that's also deal by section 14 so special regulation here required memorandum of association article of association altered restriction on the membership first you are a public then you wants to become a private it means here minimum seven here minimum two so restriction of maximum here 200 
if due to any reason your members are more than 200 more than 200 in such cases you need to be restrict these members so that is rules also applicable changing of name not valid this conversion unless approved by order of the center government so role of center government is also very important in the conversion if you required the prior approval you first take the approval if your applications are pending before the tribunal in relates to your prior identity then what's happened with those identity they remain as it is for that purpose so filing the copy of the same to the roc that is requirement statutory company that's another form of company besides special companies if any company established by any act either by central government or state government known as statutory company or corporations so no need to be draft a memorandum of association to these companies their act is treated as their memorandum of association and here some example ongc bpcl hpcl and lic these are the examples of your statutory companies or you may be say corporations so one another form of companies here registered company a company incorporated under the company act is known as registered company so company limited liability company companies limited by share this section deal company limited by guarantee deals by this section company limited by guarantee having share capital deals by section 285 conversion of a company limited by guarantee into company limited by shares so every type of conversion in, is allowed in the law books a company other than special company may convert into limited by share and what's the formalities these are the formalities you need to be fulfilled by special resolution alteration in documents memorandum of association and article of association filing of resolution with roc so these are the conditions if you fulfill these conditions you are allowed to be convert the same there is no issue so unlimited liability company which defined in section 3 to c the liability of each member extend to whole amount of the company's debt and liabilities so if members liability is limited that governed by limited liability concept but you are also allowed to be incorporate as a unlimited liability company the only difference is here liability of the members up to unlimited extent and unlimited liability company may or may not have share capital share capital is not an essential condition to obtain the certificate of incorporation according to section 67 a unlimited company is not subjected to any restriction regarding purchase of its own share so when the liability is unlimited so no any restriction is applicable on such companies conversion also allowed of unlimited to limited but for the prior acts your status remain as unlimited your status of unlimited to limited for future purpose not for past purpose and these are the formalities you required special resolution within seven days you publish in the two leading newspapers one in english another relates to uh, registered office uh, state which language is most popular in where your registered office situated you invite objection on website notice scheme of website so these uh, within 40 days you apply to roc with fees and documents registrar after consider request complaint inquiry properly address by company should or should not be granted approval certificate of incorporation fresh issued by roc and association not for profit section 8 deals with the same you establish this type of company for some special purpose charity or social purpose or advancement of sports education 
रिसर्च और सो मैनी थिंग्स है एंड सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इशू द लाइसेंस टू दीज टाइप ऑफ कंपनीज एंड दीज कंपनीज एग्जिम्शन फ्रॉम एनी प्रोविजन ऑफ द कंपनी एक्ट थ्रू दिस एग्जिम्शन एंड नो नीड टू बी यूज द नेम ऑफ पब्लिक और प्राइवेट लिमिटेड बाई दीज कंपनीज एंड सम एग्जाम्पल्स हेयर मोहन बागान क्लब जिम खाना क्लब दिल्ली डिस्ट्रिक क्रिकेट एसोसिएशन दे आर द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ दिस सेक्शन एट कंपनीज स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ कंपनीज विच एस्टेब्लिश अंडर सेक्शन एट दिल्ली हाई कोर्ट हेल्ड दैट इन दिस केस एन सी बख्शी वर्सिज यूनियन ऑफ इंडिया held that association registered under section 8 shall not alter its document memorandum of association and article of association without prior approval of central government so government company defined in section 245 where 51% share or more than 50% shares in the hands of government either central government or state government or jointly so foreign company defined in section 242 means any company incorporated outside the india that's deal as foreign company if their place of business in india that's deal as foreign company and financial statement should be submit or the necessary document you should be submit to the office of the roc as and when required before start your business in india so they are the few sections which companies are deals as a foreign company if being a foreign company which documents you need to be submit or which type of notices you required so if any company deals uh, online form mode that's also need to be submit these if a company conduct online services telemarketing telecommunication telemedicine education and if education and information research these companies need to fulfill these formalities now holding and subsidiary company means if any company have a control on the another company this company is known as holding company and another company whose hold hold by this holding company that's known as subsidiary company so their status we consider from the status of a holding company and associate company is a company that's the trigger point here where at least 20% share in the hands of another company but not exceed more than 50% 20 to 50% shares if the control of another company this company is known as associate company the trigger point is here 20 to 50 so that is requirement here producer company is a hybrid mode of company between limited company and a cooperative society so basically producer company establish to run the business in primary produce where the business relates to agriculture or so many types of business production harvesting processing procurement grading pooling handling marketing selling export of primary produce so these type of businesses are primary produce bee farming horticulture pisci culture these businesses which relates to agriculture they are the primary produce and primary produce a huge list agriculture animal husbandry horticulture floriculture pisci culture viticulture forestry forest produce revegetation bee farming so lot of a huge list is available here relates to primary produce now we are here on summary part the company act 2013 classifies companies into various types each with this characteristics ownership structure and regulatory requirements understanding the differences between these kinds of companies crucial for successful business planning and compliance with the legal framework by selecting the appropriate company structure businesses can ensure limited liability ease of doing business and adherence to governance standards thank you